Hello, and welcome to the GRACE podcast series. My name is Denise Brock, and I am the Operations Director for the Global Resource for Advancing Cancer Education, or GRACE. In this podcast series, we interview patients, advocates, and healthcare professionals to provide the most updated information for our community and to highlight important issues facing those dealing with a cancer diagnosis. We hope you find this information valuable. For questions or comments, please visit us at cancergrace.org. So the next topic that we'll cover is the question, for EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer, can patients benefit from receipt of immunotherapy? And the short answer is, of course, anybody can potentially benefit from immunotherapy, but there are multiple predictors that we use to figure out what the chances are of response to immunotherapy. And we use those predictors to decide how should we sequence immunotherapy? Should we give it early on in treatment, or should we wait later because there are other treatments that may be more beneficial, perhaps with fewer side effects overall? So the first question that we'll ask is, well, what are the predictors of response to immunotherapy, and how does the presence of an EGFR mutation inside the tumor change those predictors of response? For immunotherapy in general, as we know, the predictors of response are pdl one status. So I think of pdl one as this protein um, on the outside of the tumor. It's like a shield. So if the immune system was trying to fight the cancer overall, and this pdl one shield exists around the tumor, it may have developed to basically block the tumor or shield the tumor from the immune system. And the drugs that we have either fight pdl one the shield directly, and block it so that the immune system can get through, or fight PDL1 or PD1 on the immune system cells, which is the other half of the receptor binding to the shield. So basically, these drugs work when the immune system was trying to fight the cancer, but then blocked, and then we're removing that block. So PDL1 status, we test for this directly. It can be 0%, 1 to 49%, uh, or 50% or higher, 0% is negative, 1 to 49% is considered low, 50% or higher is considered high. And this does seem to be a predictor of response to immunotherapy, even in EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer patients. Not sure that that's as true in ALK positive lung cancer or ROS1 positive non-small cell lung cancer, which very, very rarely respond to immunotherapy. But there certainly are patients with EGFR mutant lung, non-small cell lung cancer, especially with high pdl one levels on their tumors, who can respond to immunotherapy. So the next question is, what line of treatment should we use immunotherapy if EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer can respond to immunotherapy, but the chance of response to immunotherapy, I view it as one notch lower based on the pdl one status than the chance of response to immunotherapy for a patient without a targeted molecular driver alteration. So therefore, we consider immunotherapy, but often don't want to use it in the first-line setting because we have other much better drugs for EGFR mutant lung cancer. There are currently five FDA-approved drugs, um, the first-generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors, gefitinib or lotinib, the second-generation EGFR inhibitors, afatinib, dacamitinib, and the third-generation inhibitor, osimertinib. All five of these can cause dramatic response rates in EGFR mutant lung cancer in the first-line setting. Um, but some of the drugs, for example, osimertinib, seem to have a longer time until tumor comes back on average, as well as get into the brain a little bit better than the first-generation drugs. Um, so overall, immunotherapy, we push back to a later line of therapy because we have such a good option in the first-line setting of EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors, and immunotherapy can't be combined with these EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitors. We see much higher rates of pneumonitis, inflammation, kind of a drug pneumonia, and this inflammation can sometimes be life-threatening, gets worse combining the EGFR inhibitors, particularly osimertinib, which is our current preferred first-line choice in the United States, with any sort of immunotherapy. We see high rates of pneumonitis, so we don't want to combine these two things together. So in the first-line setting, I would say we shouldn't use immunotherapy for EGFR mutant lung cancer 
if we know that the EGFR mutation is there in the first place before we choose to give immunotherapy. So the key is testing for that EGFR mutation. So the next question is, should immunotherapy be given after EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor therapy? So what happens for patients who have had these pill therapies um, and their tumor has shrunk, been under control for a while, but now has grown out? This tumor is a little bit different than the original one because it wouldn't be predicted to be sensitive to any other EGFR inhibitor, particularly not after treatment with a third generation EGFR tyrosine kinase inhibitor. Although sometimes we can envision clinical trials or combination therapy where we continue the EGFR inhibitor and add other drugs to overcome that resistance. However, oftentimes we consider for patients who have had EGFR TKIs and their tumor has grown, Oftentimes we consider, well, moving on to the next line of therapy. And the next line of therapy is certainly chemotherapy. EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer can respond dramatically to chemotherapy overall. But with chemotherapy in the first line setting without EGFR mutations, we give immunotherapy at the same time. So the question is, should we give immunotherapy with that chemotherapy? We have a few points of data. Um, most of the clinical trials combining chemotherapy with immunotherapy actually did not include patients with EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer or ALK-positive lung cancer or ROS1-positive lung cancer. Most of these trials didn't include those patients because it wasn't really first line. It was second line. The EGFR pill is better first. But uh, one clinical trial, uh, which included carboplatin, paclitaxel, bevacizumab, and atezolizumab, a four-drug regimen, did include patients with EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer and did show that the addition of atezolizumab, that immunotherapy, was better than the other three drugs by themselves. And interestingly, the bevacizumab, which is anti-angiogenic and often given and does seem to be particularly beneficial in patients with EGFR mutant lung cancer, the bevacizumab did add in that trial. So just carboplatin, paclitaxel, and atezolizumab didn't benefit EGFR mutation positive patients nearly as much as the four-drug regimen all combined. So we do talk about this four-drug regimen. It's called the Empower 150 regimen with patients who are starting chemotherapy. The downsides to this regimen are there's hair loss from that paclitaxel, there can be neuropathy, numbness and tingling from the paclitaxel, and lower white blood cell counts on chemotherapy than with the other regimen that we often use, carboplatin and pemetrexid. With carboplatin and pemetrexid, based on the Keynote 189 study, we often give pembrolizumab, but that study actually didn't include patients with EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer. So we, we actually don't know should we be giving the pembrolizumab at the same time as the chemotherapy on that regimen. Although I'll tell you, in my clinical practice, I often have a discussion between those two regimens with patients talking about risk and benefit and side effects and do consider both regimens as a possibility after progression over uh, after prior EGFR TKI. So I think the answer is yes. Um, immunotherapy should be offered to EGFR mutant non-small cell lung cancer patients. Sometimes there are patients who, for whatever reason, didn't get it in the second line setting with platinum-based chemotherapy. And for those patients, I usually look at the PDL1 status and say, well, how high is the PDL1, which roughly corresponds to what's the chance of response to immunotherapy overall? If high PDL1, I'll often give it with platinum chemotherapy, but a very low or 0% PDL1, sometimes I'll even wait to later lines of therapy to try and uh, immunotherapy overall. So, what comes after platinum based chemotherapy uh, for EGFR mutant non small cell lung cancer patients? Docetaxel, plus or minus ramacirumab. Ramacirumab is another anti-angiogenic, anti-blood vessel type of drug and can be very effective, particularly in EGFR mutant patients. And after EGFR TKI, chemotherapy with platinum, docetaxel, plus or minus ramacirumab, then we're in the fourth line setting. And if a patient hasn't gotten immunotherapy by that point, sometimes they'll say, well, we can try it by itself. But in my experience, oftentimes with EGFR mutant patients, very low PDL1, immunotherapy by itself, the tumor almost seems to grow faster than if we'd been giving an alternative treatment such as chemotherapy or even going back to think about, let's try some of the EGFR inhibitor pills again. So I'm wary and I watch patients very closely when I'm giving an immunotherapy in that setting.
Thank you again for joining us. This podcast was made possible by the generosity of sponsorship from our friends at Lily, Novartis, Decada, AstraZeneca, and X Alexis. Please like and follow us on Facebook and Twitter. Send us feedback, share your story, donate and visit us for more information at cancergrace.org. Thank you for listening.